We have more now with Dr. Mark Siegel, a Fox News medical contributor, NYU Langone Health Professor and Medicine of Medicine and the author of the book COVID, The Politics of Fear and the Power of Science. Dr. Siegel, always good to see you and get your perspective. You know, we've heard one of the reasons why this new strain is so concerning is about how fast it can spread. And we know that about COVID-19 too, it seems. So first, how exactly is this different? What can we do about it? Well, Laura, people out there need to be reassured by the fact that viruses, especially this kind of RNA virus, are always changing, always mutating. And when we hear the word mutation, we get scared and we get worried. But the truth is it's happening all the time. And this particular strain, which has multiple changes, has been around since October in the U.K., and it has spread to some neighboring countries. It's been in Netherlands. It's been in Denmark. It's even gotten as far as Italy and Australia. But it's probably here in the United States. The London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine says that it's about 56 percent more contagious. But you know what? That's a mathematical model. We don't know for sure. And one thing we don't do enough of is laboratory testing to see about different strains. So that's why I'm glad to see that L.A. County is doing that right now. Yeah, you know, I wanted to ask you about your assessment on L.A. County because, you know, Christina Coleman's report uh, showed some alarming stats there. Um, as we look at the tally on Thursday alone, uh, state officials there saying the rate of acceleration has gone beyond any model and expectation that they've had. So could it be a double whammy of COVID and this new strain? Or what do you think is happening there? Well, first of all, that's possible. And there was 13,600 new cases Thursday alone, which is exorbitant. But so far, testing, genetic testing hasn't shown that it's that strain. If it were that strain, I again want to reassure people that as these viruses mutate over the course of a pandemic, they tend to become more transmissible, Laura, because they want to survive. If they end mm -hmm. up in the host, at a dead end host, and it person dies that don't spread. So they tend to become more transmissible, but they also tend to become less virulent, meaning that they're not as deadly, that they don't cause as much severe disease. And there's no evidence with this London strain whatsoever that it makes people sicker. And the right. same is true, true with the vaccine. It tends to really be covered by, by these vaccines. What are we calling it, Dr. Siegel? I, I've read that it's B117 um, and that it has, you know, as you mentioned, the mutations. And the mutations are different. Uh, but maybe we shouldn't be alarmed because, as you're saying, that this is something that happens anyway. So first of all, what are we calling it? So when we read it, we know what we're talking about here. Um, and, and can it be, you know, is the vaccine that we're hearing about here in the United States, the Pfizer, the Moderna, is it going to to protect against this. Well, the, na the, na the name you just gave for it is right. The B117 mutation. That's about, it's about 20 mutations that have mm -hmm. occurred, but some of them are to that surface protein that we're looking at, the spike protein that we target the vaccine for. But all the vaccine scientists are saying the same thing, Laura. It would take so many changes to that surface protein before it would affect the vaccine. The vaccine is magnificent in that. And I'm talking about the Pfizer and the Moderna right. vaccine specifically, the ones we have out now. They actually go for multiple targets on that on that okay. protein, causing an enormous, robust re immune response. Almost zero chance that it would affect vaccine coverage at this point. All right. Well, we'll take that. Dr. Mark Siegel, thank you so much for being with us today. As always, great to hear your perspective. See you soon. Thank Eric. you, Laura.